things in. And we're going to do some practical stuff as well. Just that you can practice at home and know exactly how to position yourself. How, how to become the reality of what God has spoken upon you. And it is so important. We sang that Isaiah song that we, we Jesus was speaking, said the words of God, where he said, he framed it, he framed things. And if you start realizing that you were there when he framed it, you were partnering with him because he knew you already before the foundations of the earth. So you actually were such in oneness with him that you were part of creation. So what did he actually do? He showed you whom you are and what your responsibilities are. What you are capable of doing. And the first thing we're going to visit, and these are all scriptures that you know well. Genesis 1 verse 26, it says, God said, and this is out of the Amplified, and God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remember now, it's the fullness of God. Let us, the fullness of God. You are part of that because you're in Him. You're part of the perfection of God. Make mankind in our image after our likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, beasts and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in its own image and the image and likeness of God he created him, male and female. He created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the services of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over everything living, every living creature that moves upon the earth. You've heard it, you've heard it so many times. The instruction of God that told you to rule. But firstly, he said, you are created to my image. Now, to position yourself, to get your heart in alignment, it, something needs to become a reality. It means you need to become a witness of it. You need to see it. You need to get the understanding of it. And to get the proper understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom of something, is when you actually see it. You see how it happened. You see how it's created. Everything. How do you look in God's image? Because God said he created you in his image. What is that to you? What does that look like to you? So I want you to close your eyes. I want you to visualize you in the image of God. What does that look like? So firstly, you need to see the image of God. Then you need to take it, you need to become it. So spend some time, and remember what you see now is from God, because you're busy with God, you've got a sanctified imagination. How do you look as the image of God? You see, people, this is so important that you spend time doing these things. If I can give you a key this morning, if you want the Word to become a reality of life, you need to start to visualize, and you need to start to visualize yourself in that position. In the, now he said, I'm giving you authority and power to rule over. What does that authority look like in your life? 
What is authority to you? What does it look like when God says you've got authority to rule over the earth? What are your capabilities? What are you allowed to do? You see, these are things that you need to visualize and ask yourself, wow, I am a king, I've got authority, I've got rulership, I've got all power, I've got all dominion, I've got the mandate, the blessing from God to do it. What does it look like in your life? And the more we spend time and start looking and reading and meditating, and meditating is chewing, is imagining things. It's your imagination, your mind going. The more you start seeing yourself in true authority and the true image of God, the more you're going to become a ruler. And That's how you read the Word. You can't get the fullness of the power of the Word without becoming one with it without taking possession of what's been given. That's how you start and work through to take possession of what's been given to you. But you need to look at your own pathway, what God has set before you. How does it look in your life? Because each and every one's vision of it or understanding of it will differ. Because each and every one is unique. There's a, there's a certain pathway for each and every one that you need to take possession. And possession means I become it. And what you behold with your eyes, you become. The more you gaze upon it, the more you meditate on it, the more you empower it. It means that my sound, my frequency, my vibration aligns to God's purpose plan, to God's scroll for me in heaven. What happens then? My authority enlarges all the time because I've got the understanding. You can only walk in power and dominion and authority when you've got the understanding of whom you are, of what's been given, and how to do it. Next thing that you need to realize, next position that you need to accept is Hebrews 7, 17. For it is witnessed of him, you are priest forever after the order, the rank of Melchizedek. We know the old Hebrew 7, the order of Melchizedek, you're a king and a priest. Close your eyes, please. How do you look as a priest in the order of Melchizedek? How do you see yourself clothed? What are you clothed? And what are the mandate and the ability of a priest. What do I need to step into and what do I need to become? And some of you will get visions now of extravagant clothing and light and glory and everything. There's nothing wrong with that because that's how God clothes His priests. Don't get a religious thing and say, no, I've just got sackcloth and all these funny materials and torn clothing. No, God clothed you as a king and a priest in the fullness of Him and glory. You see the power of that when you start thinking about it. What happens if you, your whole Attitude, your whole body language, everything of every day changes because you, when you've, before you leave your house in the morning, you take on that image. So you're going to start walking with a different body language, with a different attitude that you actually want to reveal Christ as the king and the priest in the order of Melchizedek. Then we go, I think one of the biggest scriptures to me for this year, Psalm 115, verse 16. Love it. This is amazing. Listen what God declares, and we spoke about it a few weeks ago. The heavens are the Lord's, 
but the earth he has given to the children of men. Listen what God says. Heaven belongs to him. The earth belongs to you. If ever you want to be in awe and amazement and wonder of God, just take that scripture. How did God do it? He created it. I was part of it. He declared it. He spoke in it. And now he says, it is yours. The question now we need to ask is, have we possessed it? Have we taken ownership? What does it look in your life to take ownership of earth? What are your mandates? What are you allowed to do? In reality, you're allowed to do anything. But if you're a son of God, you would only want to do as it is in heaven. Everything to glorify Him because you and I were created to lift Him up, to sing hallelujah, to lift Yah up. To, to glorify, to exalt Him. We created for His pleasure. So what do we do? We take possession of the earth and we restore glory upon it. By how? By walking like God, by releasing His presence, by decreeing, declaring, by prophesying, by looking at His image, by looking at heaven, by being in His presence, releasing His plans and His purposes. So what do we need to do? We need to die on ourselves. You were already crucified with Him before the foundations of the earth. But now it's become it. Become that vessel that walks as God. I don't say you are God, as God. Because he said, imitate me. So your whole thing is about glorifying him. So, let's go through our lives. Let each and every one can look at my own life, everything. Some days you feel miserable. You lose your joy, you lose everything. And it's stuff out there. And we walk like that. Nobody's going to follow God if they see us like that. Especially in this time and the season. And this is a time and a season where we need to get God on this earth because the earth is in chaos and God's in you and the manner and the way we treat each other now. We look at each other. It's the way that we treat God. The earth belong to you. What do I, how do I activate? How do I change the earth? Now, God says, my words don't fall to the ground. In Luke 21, 33, says, let God, everything passes away except the words of God. In 1 Peter 1, 25, it says, God's words endure forever. So if God's words endure forever, it means your words endure forever. Your words don't fall to the ground if I release God's words. Even God's words of creation is still swirling in the spirit realm. Creation never stops. Now, I need to declare, 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 I need to decree, I need to prophesy the will of God. But now, what do I need to do? I need to look on the, at the earth. And I need to have discernment. What is wrong? You need to become a strategist. You need to become a king and to see what is defiling my kingdom. What is defiling my life? What do I spend my time and watching and listening to? Negative things, gossip, slander, witchcraft, whatever there is. What television programs, what radio, what do I listen to from people? What do I align myself with with my belief systems?
And then you to act as a king. Now I'm king of the earth. You are a king of the earth. Now to say, okay, the following needs to be removed so that the glory of God can fall. Now I need to remove it. How do I remove it? Everything first in the spirit. As it is in heaven. As I declare from a heavenly perspective, from my seat, from Mount Zion in heaven, I release it so that my earth, my words, covers the earth. The sound of my voice goes around, it forms a blanket around the earth. And then I need to, that Jeremiah 1, where he speaks as a prophet, then I need to set up, root, and destroy, but then I need to build and give life. And what do I need to create? What do I need to speak? To create it. You see, now you come to a place where you're not busy with just a religious prayer. You are actually influencing all of creation. Now you sit there in your chair, wherever you've got your glory chair or whatever place is special to you. You sit there and you meditate, you visualize and you release. And what do I do now? I visualize it in the Spirit. How does it look? What's happening in the Spirit? Because if I see it in the Spirit, I see what's happening, I know it's going to happen on the earth. It's impossible to die. Same as when we worship, we had the songs on the screen this morning. Did you visualize it? Did you partner with the Holy Spirit? Did you become what you were declaring, that you, what you were singing? Did you see that? And these things that I'm telling you, it's so important for now. And this year, we're going to get it. God is going to take everything away. He's going to work deep in the hearts of the people, all of us. And He's going to remove everything that keeps you away from His glory. And He's going to teach us how to pray for the lost, how to Pray for the people that don't like you, that curse you, that gossip. He's going to teach us how to pray for the occult people, for the enemies. Because he's going to look at you to see, have you died in yourself? Is it about him or is it about you? And you need to, all of us need to allow him to work deep. And that should give you such a desire just to surrender. Said, Lord, whatever it takes, come and remove it. Just come and do your work in me. Then we're going. She's looking for the Joshua. She's looking for the um, Gideons. Won't look at the amount of people, how big it is, or what the enemy looks like. Even if it's just them, just keep on moving. Just keep on fighting the thing, walking and running the race till you are finished and trusting God. Then we go just to remind you of Ephesians 2, verse 18. It says, the first verse 5, it says, there's never been a generation that has been, this is out of the passion, that has been given the detailed understanding of this glorious and a divine mystery until now. We kept it a secret until this generation. God is revealing it only now to His sacred apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. What does God say? He's revealing everything. So we're going to say sacred apostles and prophets. My question to you is now, can you, some of you are going to say, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an apostle. But if you're a son of God, you are that. Because God gave you His fullness. He gave you the fullness of the fivefolds inside of you. So what does God say? I am revealing everything. Apostle is what? It's a special messenger. Ain't you a special messenger of Christ? So He's given you the divine revelation of everything. question is, do you trust it? 
Do you believe it? So then become it. I don't work towards it. I am that. And that again you need to visualize. What is the revelation of Jesus? How does it look? And how does it look in me and I in Him? We sang about it. He's in us and we in Him. That last song, a song of Isaiah. Beautiful. Then verse... Ephesians 2 verse 18. And now because we are united to Christ, we both have equal and direct access in the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. How does it look for you? I want you to close your eyes again. I want you to visualize yourself in front of the Father. How does it look? Because you need to get that an awe and wonder and amazement back. Your, your breath has got to be blown away of how you see it. Because you're also seeing a reflection of you. Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. What does he say there? Everything will be accomplished through whom? Through you. Through what? His miraculous power that's in you. He did not say, come to me and ask me for your power to do something now. He said, go and do it. His miraculous power is in you. He's given it to you. It's a faith question here. Do I believe it? If I believe it, I will become it. So what do I walk? I'm going to walk with power and authority and I'm going to talk. I'm going to release because he said... To accomplish everything, He's given me miraculous power. So it means He's given me power and authority just to speak and to talk. In Hebrew 1 where He speaks about He maintains and He upholds all of creation through His mighty word of power by just talking. So He's got power. You've got power when you speak. You've got creative power. You've got healing power. You've got power to destroy. You've got power to build. He declared upon you. It's not Etienne telling you about it. God declared it upon you. And when we in situation that look impossible, we need to align ourselves. It means I need to take on this word. I need to take on this promise. It means that I need to step into the character, the nature, the honor, and the authority of God, the names of God. I become it, and then I release it. I become the word so that I can manifest the word. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, I think this is one of the most underrated scriptures that people say, and some people declare it, joy of the Lord's your strength, we all know that. What is your strength? The joy of the Lord. When we are weak, when we are broken, joy. Every time we lose our joy, we lose our power and authority in the Spirit. Every time we're irritated, 
unforgiveness, hatred, whatever comes in us, hurt, even if we align ourselves with unworthiness and all those type of things, it means you've got no joy, you've got no peace, because joy and peace can never separate it. And Exodus 33, 14, the Lord speaks about my presence and my peace shall be with me. So when He speaks to say it means you enjoy, you mean you are in oneness with Him. It means that you're in awe and amazement of the great I am because you see Him, you visualize Him, and you've got so much joy because you see the image that you are, the power, the authority that's above you everything that's been decreed upon you, you see the marriage image and you can celebrate God. Joy is not just, I've got the joy of the Lord and we sing and we dance about it. Joy of the Lord is a heart positioning that you become, that your body, soul and spirit and unity extravagantly, unlimitedly blesses, glorifies and exalts God. It's a sound, it's a frequency that you release through your body, your soul and your spirit. As when the bones on your body step into Ezekiel 37, at comes alive. The blood of Jesus is breathed upon. It becomes light. You become a transfigured son of God in the spirit and darkness flees. And that's how you become the river of life because every part of water inside of you becomes like a mighty storm. It becomes like a river flowing and your voice becomes like the voice of Yahweh on the sea of glass and crystal of revelation where it says His voice is like a thunderstorm, like mighty waters coming. And that's why darkness flees because you are that voice then. Do you see yourself like that? That's why meditating on God Yeshua, Yahweh, the Ruach and Kadesh. The word is so important. And that's why the devil attacks. If you find out how difficult it is for people to sit down and just to gaze and just to engage a word, their minds go to meditate, to, to, to visualize it. And that's why we've come and the cult have stolen. If you tell people out there, meditate on the word, they said, oh, you're a new age. But the word David said, I'm meditating on God and His goodness all the time. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm still meditating on His goodness. Because David knew the, the, the power of meditation. That's why he said he was the perfection of praise and worship. That's why he was a man to God's heart because his sound, his frequency, his vibration that he released was in perfection because he meditated, he saw, he visualized and that's why he declared, Lord, let your spirit never leave me. And we meditate so that we can glorify God. Not of what I can receive, so that I can meditate on God to glorify Him. When you drive in your car, when you walk, do you visualize Jesus with you? Do you speak to your partner, the Holy Spirit? Some people will think you're crazy if you start talking to nothing next to you. But believe me, it works. It works. But when you walk there, do you visualize yourself inside? You see yourself, there's Jesus, but I'm actually inside of Him. And that's how heaven comes to earth. 
when you walk in unity with a knowing presence of God. You need to exercise it. The more you exercise it, people, the more you become it. But it's all birthed out of love, out of desire, and out of expectation. This is an amazing season for you to reveal Jesus. It's to all of us. It's not just for some. It's your choice. The Father, we come and we say thank you. Thank you that you've equipped us, that you've appointed us. You instructed us to reign and to rule, to take dominion. Thank you that you have given us the earth. And you even say, and Zechariah, if we obey your word and your commandments, that you will, we will rule and reign with you out of the courts in heaven and out of heaven's places. Lord, this morning, I truly ask that you will come and breathe the light of God, that the Holy Spirit will come and breathe the light of Yeshua into all the gates of our imagination, that every piece of it that's defiled, that's broken, that's shattered, be restored, and that the blood of Jesus will come and cleanse it that we can dream again, that we can visualize again, and that we can glorify you. My request this morning, Father, is that you will clothe everybody anew as kings and priests in the order of Melchizedek, that they will walk the earth as enlightened ones that rule and reign as sons of God. As Father, that the sound of true faith will be released in each and every one. And we also come in Galatians 2, Father, and we step into your faith, perfect faith, and we become that. We declare that from now on, Our words will never fall to the ground. It will create structures and places. It will restore. It will make whole. It will renew. It will remove all the lies in the kingdom. All the lies on the earth. And the dead will rise from the graves. And glorify you and praise and worship you. And we say thank you. Father, we bless this venue. We bless the new owners of Woodmill. And we release your truth, your righteousness, your love and wisdom into them. That they can step as well into your character and nature that you have given them. And we say thank you. Bless each and every family here, Father. And not just the ones of the family here the families that are represented here, their children, husbands, wives, everybody. Bless them, Father. And we say thank you. Pray it in the name above all names. The name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen.